Hey, welcome back to 65 Drums. My name's Justin. So today I'm going to be doing my full in-depth review of the Simmons SD1250. This is the successor to the Simmons SD1200, which I reviewed on the channel a little while ago when that first came out. This new drum set takes a few steps forward and a few steps back in a couple of key areas. By the way, Simmons did provide me this drum set for the purpose of this review and they're allowing me to keep it. But of course, I'm going to give you the good and the bad, whether or not this drum set is worth buying. This is not a sponsored post. So let's start off with the sizes of the drums. The snare is 12 inches across. You get two 8 inch tom pads and two 10 inch floor toms. The kick drum is 6 inches across. The cymbals are 12 inches for the hi-hat, 12 inches for the two crash cymbals. The ride cymbal is 14 inches across. It's three zones, bell, bow, and edge, and all the rest of the cymbals are dual zone. Moving over to the drum rack, it's made out of metal and plastic pieces. So all the legs and all the connecting bars are made out of metal, and then all the connector pieces are made out of plastic, all the mounts are made out of plastic, the L rods that connect to the pads are made out of metal. This drum rack technically does have boom arms, but they're only like five inches long, something like that. So they act more as a way to angle the cymbals and not as a way to extend the cymbals. If you start playing a lot of electronic drum sets in the $1,100 price range like this kit, you'll notice that a lot of times the drum racks are very narrow, especially near the front. Comparing it to something like a Roland TD-07KV drum rack, it's a much smaller drum rack. And that means it's harder to have as much room if you want to give it a more spread out sort of feel. Don't expect this to be as rock solid as like a Gibraltar acoustic drum rack. It does sort of move around and it could be because I haven't tightened every single little nut and bolt on this thing. And it could be because of the uneven floor, but it does move around while you're playing it. I thought it was a nice touch that all the cables are sort of colored to match the drum rack. And they even have matching cable ties that allow you to secure all the cables and make it look nice and flush. There's also a couple of other free things they include with the drum set. The first is a pair of drumsticks. There are no markings on them, but they appear to be like the thickness of Vic Firth 5A drumsticks. They're very, very light, so I don't expect these to be super durable, but I'm never going to say no to free drumsticks. They also give you a free drum key in the box. And then finally, it does come with a single kick drum patch in the box to prolong the life of the kick drum pad. Okay, so now let's cover some of the pros and cons of this drum set, starting off with the kick drum. As far as stability, I didn't have any problems with it moving around. It's got some spikes on the front of it, and while it does wobble a little bit because it's only like a, a six inch pad, I didn't have any problems with it scooting around. Inside of the module, I had to increase the threshold setting because the kick drum was so sensitive, I could trigger a kick drum sound just by tapping on the pedal without even making contact with the drum head. It picks up playing with double kick drum pedals perfectly fine. And that's great because I remember having some issues with the old version of the kick drum or the old version of the module. Sometimes it's hard to tell if the fault is on the module side or the drum pad side. It's the only pad of the bunch that doesn't use a mesh head. If you do pick up this drum set, you for sure have to tension all of the screws because I did have one fall out after just playing it for a couple of days. I didn't think that I had to go and tighten everything down, but apparently you do. Is this kick drum just as good as a Roland KD-10? Probably not. I don't think it's nearly on that level of quality, but it does the job as far as I've been testing it. Now, aside from the snare, also the tom pads do have dual zones, so rim and head. They really rely on this with the built-in kits because they add everything to the rims of these toms. You can go in and remove those sounds if they get a little bit annoying because you can accidentally hit the rims on occasion, or you can lean into it and have an extra four crash cymbals on your kit, whatever you want to do. Now, there are two things that surprised me the most about sitting down and playing this drum set. The first is that it has so many cymbals and drums for this price range. At $1,100 in the United States market, this is the biggest electronic drum set that money can buy at that exact price tag. But the other thing that really surprised me is that they completely redesigned the snare drum. This is not the same snare as the SD1200. It has the same shell, but a different port and a different set of sensors inside. Because of that input, this is now a proprietary snare that only works with Simmons. And the last time that a company used that style of port 
was probably that Italian company called Mark Drum that went out of business. So I decided to open up the snare and see what was inside. That made them want to use that style port. So on the old snare, you have the foam cone with the head piezo underneath. And then if you remove that little triangle that it's sitting on, you'll see the rim piezo. On this new version of the snare, all of that is still identical, but now there is a third piezo with a second trigger cone on top that sits towards you. According to their marketing blurb on guitarcenter.com, it looks like they did this in order to increase rim shot sensitivity or accuracy. Okay, so I've been doing a lot of testing between the new snare and the new module and the old snare and the old module. And here's what I've learned. On the old snare, I was triggering two sounds at once. When you did a rim shot sometimes, you'd hear the rim sound and the drum head sound at the exact same time. Meanwhile, on the new one, they fixed that problem and they've isolated it where you only heard a rim sound or a drum head sound. The one thing that could have tipped the balance to make this even more accurate is if the module came with a rim head trigger adjustment. Roland modules come with this. It allows you to sway the balance between what's considered a rim sound and a drum head sound. And because only the Simmons people have access to that setting inside of the module, that means I can't push this snare to be as accurate as it's capable of being. The mesh heads are kind of like an average medium feel. They're not quite as soft feeling as Gava mesh heads or F note mesh heads, but they're not the bounciest mesh heads I've ever tried either. So they strike a decent balance. So now let's talk about the cymbals. For the most part, they all perform exactly the way that you want them to. They don't feel like cheapo $500 electronic drum set cymbals, and they don't feel quite as nice as $2,000 electronic cymbals. They sort of sit exactly where you would expect in the price range that they're at. Another thing that stood out to me about this drum set is that they fixed the ride cymbal. On the old version of the Sims SD1200, the ride cymbal had a very, very sensitive spot to the left of the bell, but the moment you move an inch and a half to the right or the left, all of a sudden it got really, really quiet. So they saw that feedback and they fixed the ride cymbal pad or possibly just something inside of the module to fix it. These cymbals also have built-in rotation stopping mechanisms with a cutout on the inside of the cymbal and a matching piece of plastic that sits on the cymbal stand. So when it goes into that socket, it allows it to tilt forward and backwards, but not spin around. It's not completely foolproof, but it does just enough to reduce strain on the cables. And it's a nice workaround from the other options that Yamaha and Roland have locked down. But there is one problem that I did have with this set, and it's in regards to the hi-hat. When you play on the hi-hat really fast on the bow area, it picks up all your hits. When you play really fast on the edge of the cymbal, it also picks up all of your hits. But if you play them both one after the other like this, it will miss half your hits. Here's a quick example. So I was wondering why exactly this issue was happening, so I spent a bunch of time narrowing down the cause of this. So first, I tried using this hi-hat and swapping it with a crash, because they're both the exact same cymbal pad. I also tried it with a 12-inch Roland cymbal that's the exact same size as this, and was having the exact same problem with a different manufacturer's cymbal. And then I also tried adjusting the re-trigger cancel, the threshold, uh, the crosstalk settings inside of the module for the hi-hat, and I still couldn't fix the issue. I have the old version of this module. It's, the, it's this one right here. And I didn't remember having this exact same problem on this old version of the module. So I decided to test both of these modules side by side and see what exactly the cause was. So it's pretty clear cut here that even though the modules look identical, they did something inside of the software between both versions that messed up the hi-hat on one of them and not on the other. And the hi-hats weren't perfect on the 1200 version, but they got drastically worse on this new version. So I hope they do rush out a patch because until that happens, it's going to be hard to recommend a drum set where the hi-hat performance is not where it should be with other drum sets in its class.
Okay, so now let's move ahead to the drum module. Both modules come with an extra piece of plastic in the box that allow you to put your cell phone right there or your tablet. The Simmons SD1200 and 1250 line are the only electronic drum sets in the US market that have faders and a color screen on the module. That shouldn't be rare, but it's just something that no other module seems to have at this price range. The faders are also multi-purpose, so you can adjust the tuning of your drums, the filter of your drums, high and low EQ, and, and of course the volume of all your drums with these fader selectors right here. Now the really baffling thing about this tuning fader is that you're not just tuning whatever drum you happen to be playing. It's a global tuning effect, which really doesn't make any sense for a drum set sound. You're tuning your crashes, your toms, your snare, just everything all at the same time, up or down. I highly recommend tuning your drums from the edit page because you're making individual adjustments to the different drums and cymbals from there. When you first see this module, you'll notice there's this giant Bluetooth button on the front of it. And don't get too excited about that because it's just for Bluetooth MIDI. It's not for Bluetooth audio, allowing you to connect wirelessly to your cell phone to play Spotify. Now, something that I like about this module is that they're using the color screen to give you different photos of different kits that match what you're playing. That shouldn't be revolutionary. That should be a standard feature that everybody has. But for some reason, Simmons is like the only company doing it right now, which is kind of awesome. Although it is a tad cringy to see this slow wiping animation between each kit change. You can also tell that the processor is slow because once you're in the edit menu and you're adjusting anything, even trigger settings, if you start playing the drums, there will be this giant long latency that sounds really weird. Now briefly touching on the overall sound quality of the module, to be honest, this is kind of worst in class. It's not anywhere near the reigning champion, which is the Yamaha DTX Pro module, and it's not anywhere near the quality of the Roland TD-07, which I think is a notch below the Yamaha module. And it's going against like other drum sets around this price that are made by Chinese companies, such as the Elise's Crimson II Special Edition module, or the Millennium modules around this price, or the Gear for Music drum set modules around this price. There are a lot of sounds inside of here, but they're going for quantity over quality. They're very low resolution sounds, at least they seem like it to me, and the mastering of the sounds are all over the place. On one kit, the toms will be incredibly boomy, and then on the next kit, they'll sound just really dead or just really strange. It's almost as if there were two people that were mixing all the sounds for the kits inside of this drum set. But at the end of the day, sound is subjective, so whether or not you like the sounds is gonna be up to you. But for me, I would recommend this drum set more as a MIDI controller. So get a USB cable plug in from the module over to your laptop and use drum software. There's free stuff like Steven Slate drums or use something really nice like uh, Superior Drummer 3, which is what I personally use and I really like the sound of. Okay, so now that you know the details about the drum set, let's wrap it up and talk about who might wanna buy this kit and whether or not it's worth buying in the first place. Unless they fix the hi-hat, I can't recommend this drum set. The fact that I can't play like that on the hi-hat is a core foundational problem of this drum set that needs to be addressed. But assuming they do rush out a firmware patch in the next month or so, assuming they fix that, I could recommend this drum set for people that just want a large, cheap drum set to use as a MIDI controller. They wanna use uh, their laptop as the sound source with whatever your favorite drum plugin is. If they fix the hi-hat problem, this could be a good drum set for people that wanna use drum software. But until that happens, I'm just gonna have to cross my fingers and hope. And that's the review. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day and I'll see you all in a few.